My name is Hans Christen. I am Associate Division Director within the Material Science and Technology Division and I do research on oxide materials on a Department of Energy funded research project. We work on these what we call transition metal oxides. This is a class of oxides that, that have all sorts of interesting properties. Some of them are magnetic, some of them are metallic, some of them are superconducting, some of them have an electric polarization, some of them transmit light differently depending on whether you apply an electric field. So they have all sorts of functional properties. What we're doing is we're taking these materials and we're breaking them down into the smallest units, the, the, the building blocks, and stacking them artificially into new materials to see how we can combine and enhance the, the properties that, that are there already in the building blocks, but sometimes start completely new when we combine different materials that wouldn't want to coexist in nature. In most cases, we don't know what the properties are going to be, and we don't know what the properties are going to be useful for. This is what we call discovery science to a large extent. We take interesting properties and see what happens when you start to manipulate them. For example, what does an electron do in a material? Well, we cannot go and ask an electron, hey, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? So we have to learn in a different way why do electrons behave in certain ways? And so we build structures that put the electrons in a material in, in unusual conditions. And so from that, from looking at what they do in this kind of uh, a constraint, we learn about what the mechanisms are that control the behavior of electrons or ions or lattice vibrations or light absorption and, and how we can influence it and control it so we can make better materials whether it be for better storage devices for your computer, whether it be for better batteries, for better um, catalysts, for example. So there are all sorts of different uh, potential applications. One of the, 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 the real big challenges, sort of the, the, the visionary goal, oh, this would be great if we could do that, is if we could predict what a material is going to do before we make it, then predict what it takes to make it and actually make it. Usually what we're doing is we make one thing, we try to make one thing and something else happens. From that we learn and it helps us again. We're not at the point where we can say we want the material with those properties and then go and do that. We can optimize properties, we can tweak things, but we don't have a direct route to just get there. Nobody does. But material science is working in a direction that we should be able to predict how to make a material or what to make as a material that solves a specific problem. If you could do that, you could go directly in and say, I want a material that stores twice as much energy in my laptop battery or drives my car twice as far or a solar cell that lasts twice as long and puts out twice as much energy, a window that doesn't get dirty. There's, there's endless opportunities if you if you could think through of, of, of how to predict the properties and then implement it. It takes different skills along the way to, to take it from a basic discovery to an actual application. And in the area where I do my research, we are on the side where we're looking at the discovery, at the understanding, and our skill set is not the same as the skill set of the people who take it further. So having a place where these all fit together is actually what makes ORNL extremely unique. Even if, an, if you compare it to other national labs, we have a much broader spectrum of going from very basic research to very applied research.